you guys have a block or a book. We're going to need that a little bit later on. If you don't have it, don't worry. And if you, if there's anything that I do that you don't like or doesn't feel good, remember, always listen to your body. You know your body best. And just take a relax, take child's pose, lie on your back, um, anything that you need to allow you to continue on with your practice. So with that, let's start lying on our backs. And I'd like you to take a nice, big, good morning yoga stretch with your arms over your head. Take a nice, big stretch with your arms over your head, reaching back. Maybe sparkle out your fingers and your toes. Take another big breath. Let your rib cage expand and contract. And bring your arms back down. When you feel ready, bring your knees into your chest. Uh, Rosie was lying just outside of the, <laughs> the camera view. And I, think she, I think she's shy today. She wants to sleep in here, but not on camera. Fair enough. Anyways, bringing your knees into your chest. And you can start to rock from side to side. But separate the knees a little wider apart. So you're going to get a little more of a flattening in your low back. A little bit of a stretch. Maybe rocking from side to side if that feels good. And then we'll bring our feet to the outside edges of the mat. Knees are bent. And I'd like you to just start to drop your knees from side to side. You can bring your arms away from your body if you'd like. So we're gonna take nice deep breaths, dropping the knees from side to side, going slower than you think you're going, like just try to pull back and not go too quickly. We're just gonna loosen up the hips. And we're going to take one more drop from side to side until you feel like it's even. And then bring your knees in one more time. And I'd like you to just lift your head and shoulders up, draw your abdominal muscles in, and we're going to curl ourselves into a little tiny ball. And then bring yourself back down. Bring your feet flat to the ground with the feet approximately hip distance apart. You can just reach for the backs of your heels. We're gonna lift our hips up and take a breath in a bridge pose. And lower back down, pause for a moment. Bring your knees into your chest. We're gonna have another little hug. And then relax your head and shoulders and your feet back down. Take a breath. Once again, lift your hips up into bridge and then relax the spine back down to the ground we're going to do that rounding of the back one more time this time we'll hold a little bit longer so i really want you to pull the belly muscles in tuck your chin into your chest and we're going to hold here for a count of five four three two one and then relax back down bring your feet flat to the ground Lift up your hips, and then this time, let's snuggle the arms into the body. Maybe clasping the hands together, and we're going to lift the hips up and take one more big breath, and then relax back down to the ground. <laughs> okay, this might be the day that she can't stay here. Okay. And then just take a nice big breath. Just take a nice big breath. All right. I'd like you to bend your right knee into your chest. And we're going to stretch the right leg up in the air. And we're going to start to roll the ankle in some circles. Give the back of your leg a nice little massage.
And then we're going to bring the leg back down or bend the knee. Take your left hand on your knee and bring the leg across the body. Any amount that you can, you can stretch your right arm away from you. Any amount that you can. Take a nice big breath. And we're gonna come all the way back with the leg, let it stretch out onto the ground. Take your left leg, reach it up towards the ceiling, start to roll your ankles, squeeze and release your toes, have some massaging of the back of the leg. All that good stuff to just start to put space in your body. Let's take another breath like this. And Bend your knee close, take your right hand on your knee, bring your leg across the body, any amount that you can, starting to just open up your back and twist. Nice big breath into your belly. And we'll come all the way back and release the leg out. Both of your legs. Stretched out on the ground, bring your arms over your head. Let's interlace our fingers and press the open palms away. And I want you to take a nice big stretch, a big, big stretch one more time, breathing in and breathing out. And then we're gonna release the arms and I'd like you to bring yourself up however you'd like. You can rock back and forth on your spine. You can roll to one side, but we're gonna lift ourselves up into a tabletop position, coming onto your hands and knees. And let's start by doing some cat and some cows. So we're going to continue to do some cat and cows. I'm going to just take a quick look here at my computer and make sure everything is okay. All right. Good. Looks okay. You guys let me know if anything changes. So cat and cows, opening up the back. I'd like you to start to push your hips from side to side as well, doing some twisting of your spine. And just kind of work on areas that are feeling tricky, right? Like if you feel a lot of tightness, you know, in your upper back, maybe you're in your hips, just sort of move into this personalized stretch that you're doing here just to put space in your body and we're going to do this for just about 15 more seconds so keep breathing keep breathing in and out through your nose and from here we're going to widen the knees big toes touching and send your hips back towards your heels stretch your arms forward and just release back i want you to really press your hips back towards your heels Fingers reaching forward, lots of big breaths. Take another breath like this. And then I want you to keep your right arm reaching forward. Take your left arm and stretch it back alongside the body if you can. And with that left hand resting on the ground, trying to also have your forehead on the ground, I want you to really stretch through your right hand, through your right arm. I want you to literally imagine that you are stretching out your bones, that you're pulling at your skin in a nice, comfortable way, of course, but just big breath here, lengthening, lengthening, lengthening. We're gonna take one more breath. I know this is tricky to hold in, in this position for a lot of us. Okay, relax that right arm and then just Switch sides, left arm forward, right arm stretches alongside the body. And now we're going to do that stretching and pulling on the left side. So reaching, reaching, reaching. Trying not to clench your teeth as you're doing this. It's a very natural thing. And you're literally making your arm get a little fraction of a millimeter longer. So reaching through your fingertips. One more breath. And 
is then just bring both arms forward. And then I want you to walk both hands over to the right side, pushing into your left hip. And then both hands over to the left side, pushing into your right hip. And then we're gonna come back to center. And if you wanna stay here a little bit longer and linger in your child's pose, go for it. But if you are ready for a little bit more, bring yourself up into downward facing dog. And we're gonna start to walk out the legs, pedal out the feet. You're gonna have your hands with your fingers spread nice and wide, your hands are shoulder distance apart. Perhaps you're swaying your hips a little bit kind of back to that same sort of personalized movement that you were just doing when you were um, on the hands and knees in your cat and cow. So now if you are in the downward dog, you're doing the same thing. You're just opening up the body. I want you to release your neck. Draw your abdominal muscles in and maybe come up on your tiptoes. Once you're up on your tiptoes, I want you to send your hips up even higher to the ceiling and then sink down through your heels any amount. We're gonna do that again. Inhale, lifting up nice and high, send the tailbone up, sink down through your heels any amount. Let's come forward to a high plank. And we're gonna hold here, starting to just warm up the body a little bit more so your shoulders feel nice and strong and broad. You're engaging your abdominal muscles, you're engaging your thighs, pushing back through your heels. Let's stay here a little tiny bit longer for five, four, three, two, one. Bring your knees down and then let's just lower ourselves down to the ground. You can bring the tops of the feet to the mat. Take your hands to the outside edges of the mat. So actually on the ground, I should say. You're on tinted fingers. Pull your arms up towards the ceiling and then we're going to inhale. Just taking a, a modified cobra. Exhale, lower back down. We'll do that again. Inhale and exhale. One more time. Inhale and exhale. And then bring your hands beside your low ribs, curl your toes under, press yourself back into child's pose. Take a stretch in the undersides of the arms. And then when and if you feel ready, bring yourself up into downward dog. You can always stay in your child's pose. So downward facing dog, if you're here, we're gonna inhale nice and high through the heels. Push the tailbone up, sink down through the heels any amount. Let's do that again. Inhale, lifting up nice and high. Exhale, sinking down any amount. One more time. Inhale, rising up. Exhale, come forward to a high plank. We're gonna hold this here for five, four, three, two, one. Bring your knees down. And we're gonna just warm up our triceps a little bit. We're gonna lower down and press back up. So keep your core nice and strong. Your elbows are gonna stay very close to the body. Lower down, press back up. Lower down, press back up. We're gonna do two more times. Lower down, press back up. One more time, lower down, press back up and back into child's pose, stretching out the arms. Let's do a little extra stretch here on the shoulders just because we're kind of still in the warming up phase. Take your right arm, thread it underneath the left. Palm facing up. You can certainly take your left arm behind your back. Take a good breath into your spine, into your shoulders. And then we're going to release and switch to the other side. Left arm under right. Right arm behind the back, if that makes sense. And release. Okay. Let's come back up into downward dog. This time in downward dog, we're gonna bring our right leg and reach it up in the air and bend the knee open. And as you're holding your knee up in the air, I want you to sink down a little more through your heel, keep your knee joint closed, and we're gonna draw a big circle in the air with our knee. Imagine you have a paintbrush on your knee. So we'll do one more circle. And then if you're still with me, we're gonna switch the direction. <laughs> you can always come down, keep your core pulled in. One more circle, so you've done two in either direction. And take your foot and step it up between your hands. And we'll come down on our left knee. 
Make sure your knees over the ankle, you feel nice and steady. We'll bring our hands to the thigh or the knee. Let's bring the arms up, palms facing in. Maybe looking up, getting a little bit of a back bend, tiny back bend. And then we'll look forward so that we can interlace the hands behind the back and take another stretch through the chest. You might find that when you're in these sort of extension positions that you're getting this nice pull here on your hip flexor on the left side. That's all good. One more time, arms up. And then bring your hands to your heart. We're going to twist to the right. Bring your hands down. Let's give that right leg a nice little stretch. You can point and flex your foot. And slide the leg back. Either staying here in tabletop and maybe doing some lovely wiggles or downward facing dog. And then for downward dog people, if you still want a bit more, we're going to come forward to a high plank, holding here for five, four, Three, two, one. Lower down to your belly. Bring your knees back up. Look, you're going to connect your knees and then lift up and lower down. And lift up and lower down. Lift up, lower down. Two more to go. And one more to go. We're working our triceps here. And then bring yourself either back into child's pose or up into downward facing dog. Take a nice big breath. Oops. Okay, I lost that person. Great. <laughs> so, taking your breath in child's pose or downward dog, here we are again, bringing yourself up when you're ready. Fingers are spread nice and wide. We know we're going to have a little bit of work here on the arms because we're going to bring the left leg up in the air, bend the knee open, sink down through your right heel. Your knee is closed, your knee joint's closed, and we're gonna draw a big circle in the air with your paintbrush that's on your knee. And let's do that again. Try to not collapse your arms. Now switch the direction. So this has got some great abdominal and back work as well. And then step your foot up between your hands, coming down on your knee. When you feel ready, bring your hands to your knee or your uh, thigh. Bring your arms straight up, maybe looking up. And then we'll look forward, take your hands behind your back, interlace, big stretch. And then looking forward again, arms up one more time. And then bring your hands to your heart. We're going to twist to the left, pull the abdominal muscles in. And then come back down, hands down, and we'll stretch out the left leg. Point and flex your foot if you'd like. And we'll take another breath. Okay. Slide your leg back. And just like before, you can stay in a tabletop, maybe go into a child's pose, maybe come into downward dog, or high plank. We're going to hold here for a nice big breath. And then... Lower yourself down in regular chaturanga. Then we're going to activate our knees, just pressing ourselves up again. <laughs> kind of this modified push-up. And then lower down, back up. Lower down. So you're keeping your arms squeezed in close to the body. Fingers are spread wide. We're going to do five in total. So we have one more to go, I believe. And then bring yourself back either into child's pose, tabletop or downward dog. We'll all just take one more breath wherever we've landed. And then let's all of us meet back again, downward facing dog. Okay. Let's walk our hands back to our feet. And I want you to take a nice little dangle, release your shoulders, release your wrists. I know there was lots of work on the wrists. Keep your belly muscles nice and strong. And consider walking your fingers from side to side. You can give your head a little shake. And then with nice, strong abdominal muscles, roll yourself up nice and slow, giving your spine a stretch, hopefully feeling like you've sort of rejuvenated your shoulders a little bit. You can do some circles. 
with your shoulders forward and back, maybe even turn your head from side to side. Okay, so we're going to continue along the same vein of what we were doing, but we're just gonna make it a little more challenging. But you can always go back to the modified version of being on your knees. You'll see in a minute. Okay, so standing nice and tall, shoulders are back, drawing the abdominal muscles in. We're gonna take a nice big breath as we bring the arms up, and then exhale, bowing forward. Lengthening into a flat back, bring your hands to the ground, walk yourself up into downward facing dog. Maybe even come up on your tiptoes, pushing your tailbone up towards the ceiling for a moment and then sinking down through your heels any amount. We're gonna take our right leg, reach it up in the air, bend the knee open. This time, pull your knee into your belly, rounding your back knee to nose. Sweep your leg back up in the air. This time, step your foot up between your hands. Come down on your left heel, and we're gonna bring ourselves up into warrior one. So in warrior one, you're squaring your shoulders off to face the top of the mat. You're in the same direction as your bent knee. Your back leg is straight. Yes, your foot is at a 45 degree angle, but you're trying not to bend that back leg. The front leg is bent. So lifting the arms up, we're gonna keep holding here for another breath. And we're gonna do the similar arm movement that we did before. And remember, you can always modify and go down like this. Okay, take your hands behind your back, interlace your fingers, take a nice big stretch. Now this time, we're gonna hinge forward, bringing your arms up towards the ceiling, but you're gonna to try to not lose that lunge in the front leg. Try not to rest weight on your thigh. This is called humble warrior. And part of the real action here happens with that back leg. You're still keeping that powerful back leg. All right, come all the way back up, warrior one, once again. Take your hands behind your back, and this time, you're gonna keep your legs this way. This is gonna feel a little weird. I want you to sort of lean kind of diagonally so you're not doing that straight forward that we were doing with um, humble warrior. You're just kind of leaning away from the bent leg, but you're keeping it strong, holding here. And I come all the way back up one more time, warrior one. And then let's move into warrior two. So sometimes you have to adjust your feet a little bit. That's okay. For the most part though, your feet stay the same. It's the torso now that faces to the left. Keep your knee open and we'll hold here. Flip your palm and we'll sweep back away from the bent knee, reverse warrior. We got lots of work happening on our front leg. Hold here for one more breath. Warrior two. Let's windmill the hands either side of the front foot. Step back into a high plank. Lower yourself down to your belly. Activate your knees again. Keep the arms in close. We're gonna lift up and down. Now if you feel like you wanna be doing these, lifting both knees off the ground, go for it. And we'll get to five. Once you get to five of them, bring yourself back up into downward facing dog. Walk yourself back to the back of the mat, just like before. Take a breath, maybe roll your wrists. We're gonna keep the belly nice and strong. Roll yourself up. Give some nice shoulder rolls. Nice big deep breath, standing tall. And we're gonna do that again on the other side. Inhale. With the arms up, holding forward. Bring your hands to your shins, lengthening to a flat back, hands to the ground, walk yourself up into downward facing dog. Might need to adjust your feet. Let's lift up high on the tiptoes, push your tailbone up towards the ceiling, sink down through your heels any amount. We're gonna take our left leg, reaching it up in the air, bending the knee open, Pull the knee into the belly, rounding your back knee to nose. Sweep your leg back up in the air. Step your foot up between the hands. Plant down through your right heel, and we're gonna come up into warrior one. So remember, you can always modify and be on that back knee. Take your hands behind your back. Nice big stretch. We're gonna hinge forward, doing humble warrior. 
Try to pull the arms up towards the ceiling. Keep the power in both of the legs. Don't forget about the back foot. Press into the outside edge of the back foot. Keep that leg nice and strong, holding here. And then lift all the way back up with the arms. And then take your hands behind your back. We're gonna kind of do that little odd movement where you're reaching sort of diagonally away from the knee. Holding here. And then come all the way back, back up into warrior one, arms up again. And now we're gonna move into warrior two. So once again, maybe readjusting the feet, but a lot of the changes with the torso now facing towards the right, you're gazing over your left hand. Flip your palm, sweep back away from the bent knee. Hold for a moment, try not to, to lose your lunge. Come back into warrior two. Windmill your hands either side of the front foot, step back into a high plank. Super strong body, lower yourself down. Activate your knees if you wanna work on the triceps. And we'll lower up and down, up and down. This is great for the back and the abdominals. Remember, you can always lift your knees up. A lot more challenge. And then bring yourself back. Wide knees, child's pose. Let's take a nice big breath. Certainly consider rolling your wrists. If they feel a little, a little tired. You might want to shift your hips from side to side. If you feel like being in child's pose is not for you, you want to be up and downward dog, make that happen. <laughs> if you feel like you want to take a regular chaturanga and lowering down into cobra or upward dog, we have done a lot of these, make that happen. Go for it. You can do a couple more if you want. Let's all of us take two more breaths, whether you are in child's pose, downward dog, high plank, whatever you want to do. One more breath. Okay, so let's actually, let's actually come to our knees. I want everyone to just make sure that you have, if you have your block or your book, I want you to just bring it to the top of the mat. If you don't have it, it's okay. We're gonna just be doing something with this as we move through our flow. So you have your block or your book, you just need one. Bring yourself back, downward dog. Walk your hands back to your feet. And then just like we've been doing, I want you to take that nice, slow, syrupy roll back up. And do some lovely releasing of any tightness that you're holding in your shoulders. Because you know we're doing lots of arm work today. And also another opportunity to roll your wrists. Always good. Maybe do like the zigzag. The dance move, the worm. I don't even, I can never remember what this is called. Okay, shake out the hands. So we're gonna do this again. We're gonna flow. We're gonna do something with the block um, as an alternative to our tricep push ups. Okay, standing nice and tall. Take your arms up, big breath, fold forward, lengthening into a flat back. Bring your hands to the ground. Walk yourself up into downward facing dog or modify as needed. Come up nice and high on your tiptoes. Push your tailbone up towards the ceiling. Sink down to your heels any amount. We're going to take the right leg. Reach it up in the air. Bend the knee open. Take the knee and touch it under the body to the left elbow. <laughs> I tricked you. Bring your arm back up. Take your knee. Now touch your right elbow. I think I said bring your arm back up. Sorry, bring your leg back up. And now step your foot up between the hands. We're going to take warrior one, once again, just like before. Arms up. Interlace your hands behind your back. Nice big stretch through the heart. And then dip forward, humble warrior. You're tucking your hip back. Your right hip might want to stick out. You're trying to pull it back. Keep your core nice and strong. Inhale, coming all the way back up, warrior one. Take your hands behind your back again. We'll Lean away from the body, taking that odd feeling. <laughs> and then come all the way back up, warrior one. Move yourself into warrior two. Flip your palm, sweep back reverse, warrior, bending away from the bent knee. Come back into warrior two. 
We're gonna windmill the hands either side of the front foot. Step back into a high plank, lower down on your knees for a moment. Take your block. I'd like you to place your block on the right side of your mat and place your right hand on the block. Your left hand lined up. We are gonna be doing a push-up, but a, a more regular push-up, not the tricep push-ups with the elbows going back. This is this more standard push-up that most people are more familiar with. And we're just gonna practice it here. So your elbows go away from the body, but you're gonna keep your core super strong. Okay, so you, you practiced it. You, you're gonna decide if you wanna do this or not. Decide if you wanna lift up your knees or keep the knees down. And we're gonna do five of them. And four, three, two, and one. Holy cow, that's hard for me. <laughs> Bring yourself back so that you are on the ground, on solid ground with both of your hands. If you feel like here you're extra spicy this morning, you want to take a regular vinyasa, lowering down, cobra, upward dog, downward facing dog. Walk your hands back to your feet. We're going to grab onto the backs of the legs if that's available and just fold yourself in. Take a really significant stretch and then bring your hands to your shins, lengthening into a flat back, fold forward. Arms out to the sides, all the way up, hands down to the heart. Okay, we're gonna do the other side. Nice big breath. Arms up, inhale, folding forward as you exhale. Lengthening into a flat back, bring your hands to the ground, walk yourself up into downward facing dog. Come up nice and high on your tiptoes, pushing your tailbone up, sink down through your heels. Take your left leg, reach it up in the air, bend the knee open. Take your knee under the body, touch your right elbow. Sweep the leg back up. Take your knee to touch your left elbow. Sweep your leg back up. And step your foot up between your hands, coming up into warrior one. Take your hands behind your back, big stretch through the heart, dip forward. Humble warrior, pulling that left hip back, right? Because it wants to jut out. You're gonna pull it back in space. Come all the way back up, warrior one. Take your hands behind your back. We'll do a little bit of that weird angled pose. It's more just to really activate your leg muscles as you lean away. And then back up one more time, warrior one. And then open up, warrior two. Flip your palm. Sweep away from the bent knee, reverse warrior. Come back, warrior two. We're gonna windmill the hands, either side of the front foot, stepping back, come down to your knees, take your block, place it underneath your left hand on the left side. Set up your hands, give yourself a couple tries at this, make sure you feel comfortable, you know you don't have to do it. So just maybe a couple test ones, and then you can keep your knees down and do five, or bring your knees up, and we'll do five. You're gonna keep your core pulled in, four, three, two, and one. And you can bring yourself back down, remove the block, maybe stretch back in child's pose, Maybe you are, like I said, extra spicy in our summertime flow because it's summer. Come forward to a high plank, lower down. Inhale, cobra or upward dog and downward facing dog. All right, let's take a rest for a moment. There we go. Resting, um, actually, you can stay, uh, yes, let's stay in child's pose for a moment and you can roll your wrist. or just even relax your wrists. And then we'll bring ourselves up and we'll just be on the knees to start with. If you can, see if you can bring yourself down to sit on the heels. If you can't do this, um, then don't. I don't want you to hurt yourself, but you could also try to take some of the weight off of the legs 
and use your, your book or your block as a little bit of a stool. But kind of what we're doing right now, stretching into the, the thighs, the knees, the feet, we're also giving our wrists a rest. So maybe we'll flip some water droplets, imaginary ones. Okay, and then you can lift yourself back up. We'll do one more thing, curl the toes under and we'll sit back on the heels as much as you can. And then maybe take a gentle press, um, one hand pressing the, the other fingers back and the thumb. We're just trying to multitask right now. We're stretching legs while we give some TLC to our wrists. Other hand, legs and toes. All right, and release. Okay, so let's come on to our, actually our hands for a minute and just tap out your feet. Just tap out your feet to release the tightness. Okay, so we're gonna come on to the forearms. We're gonna try to avoid being on our wrists for the remainder of the class, but you're gonna come on to your forearms. Elbows are under the shoulders. Your back is strong, so you're not collapsing in between your shoulders. You're using your strong back muscles to hold yourself up. The thing that can stay really soft is your neck and your jaw. So just feel free to look under your body at your legs. It's all good. But your arms, your back, all of those are working. Our wrists are definitely chill. Okay, so I'm going to give a few options here. This is work to build your back and your belly to your core. Um, if, if, but I'll give the option so you can choose the stage that you wanna, you wanna join. So take your right leg and send it back and just push into the heel. So you're still pressing down through your arms, abdominals are pulled in, pressing back to your heel. Okay, you can totally stay like this or float your right leg up. And it's a little different. It's harder to get your back completely straight the way we would if we were on our, on our hands. But we're going to think of it more for the power that we're getting with the leg and the core. Okay, so rest your leg at any time and come back up. If you want, you're going to bend your knee at 90 degrees. You're going to try to have your hips feel as level as you can get them. So just make sure you don't, you're not kind of up like this. You're going to try to level off your hips. And we're going to do 10 pulses to the ceiling. So 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And release. Bring your legs down. I would say let's stretch back into a child pose, maybe widening your knees. Something else that we can do, a different variation of child pose, is to bring your arms back and have your forehead resting on the ground. Now. A lot of people don't like that. I am one of those people. I feel like there's too much pressure on my, on my forehead, but sometimes <laughs> it's beneficial to take this pose because it really gives you a release through the shoulders. Okay, so we'll bring the arms forward again. We're gonna set up for our last side. So on our forearms, very strong arms and back, neck is soft, jaw is relaxed. Okay, so options as always, left leg stretches back. Hanging out here, feels good. Definitely engaging your core, you can feel the work. If you wanna float the leg, go for it. Again, trying to, best of your ability, keep the hips level, but it is trickier when we are pushing down on the forearms as opposed to being on the wrists or on the hands. Last but not least, bend your leg, Bend your knee at 90 degrees, level off your hips. You're really feeling your glute muscles here working, your core, your back, all of it is good stuff. And then we're gonna pulse 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. And bring your leg back down. And bring yourself back into your variation of child's pose if you want. You could do what we did at the beginning and have one arm forward and one arm back, and then alternate just to give the shoulders a little bit of a break. Let's take one more breath. Okay, 
we are going to bring ourselves up to a seated position and we're going to do one more thing with our block slash book. This is our last hard thing. For those of you that did the class with me that I do on Thursdays, the power vinyasa class, power vinyasa flow, some of these things, we did a couple of these things with the block in that class. <clears throat> so sorry about the repetition. All right. I want you to take your block, place it in between the fleshy part of your legs. So not your knees, but the, the inner thighs. And this is definitely a good place to be. There's a lot of work involved, just hanging out like this. So you feel the engagement. You're not rounding your back. If you start to round your back, you can definitely bring your hands down. But staying here, finding where your work is, I want you to practice squeezing the block between your legs. So what you're doing is you're activating your abdominals, your low transverse abdominals. You're also building pelvic floor. You're building your inner thigh muscles. It's all good stuff. So we'll just practice a couple more pulses. And then if you need to rest at any time, please do. But if you want a little bit more, we're going to add in some twisting, some oblique work. So we're going to bring our hands to the heart, or sorry, clasp your hands and then bring them to the heart. And I want you to do this because you will try to twist with your whole body versus just moving the arms. See the difference? Okay, so they're stuck to your chest and we're gonna twist to the right, squeeze the block as you twist. Come back to center, releasing the block, of course. Twist to the left, squeeze the block and come back. Okay, so we're gonna do that. Let's do that 10 times in total. So we'll go twist, twist, and you're squeezing each time, twist and squeeze. Twist and squeeze, twist, twist and squeeze. Four, three, two, and one. Okay, come back up, take the block away, bring the soles of your feet together and just take a nice big stretch forward. Um, you can have your elbows pressing inside your legs which will help release the hip flexors which we're doing a lot of work. Round your back if you want, tuck your chin. Take some good breaths here. And we'll come back up. Okay, we're gonna do one more thing with the block, but this time lying down. So let's lie down on our backs. And we're gonna take the block or the book, if you feel safe. If you don't feel safe to do this, do not do it. And place it in between your feet. So you can, of course, do this without the, the block. So, feet are, um, the soles of the feet are facing the ceiling. We're just good fun here, just for kicks. I want you to squeeze the block between your feet and feel the activation all the way down the leg. It goes right, right down to the, to the hips, of course, and to the pelvic floor. So squeeze the block and then just release. So you can, you can play with that a little bit if you wanna engage the block and have more power, have more work, go for it. If, if you wanna just concentrate on keeping your feet up in the air, that's good too. So we're gonna just do a little bit of work with the upper abdominals. Take your hands behind your head, keep your elbows open nice and wide. We're gonna lift our head and shoulders up off of the ground. We are staring at our feet or the block or the book. And we're gonna hold here, my throat is open, my neck is open, I'm not crunching my chin. And I'm holding and hovering, drawing the abdominal muscles in. And now we're gonna do 10 little pulses. So 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Everybody can rest for a minute. Somebody fell out and I'm gonna let them back in, okay? of the room, the virtual room, okay. <clears throat> so we're gonna come back, feet up, back up in the air with and without your block, whichever you wanna do. Interlace your hands, lift your head and shoulders up again. <clears throat> Pardon me, drawing your abdominal muscles in, you're nice and strong, holding here. And we'll do 10 more pulses, 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, relax, 
Take the block away. Take a breath. We're going to do one more. Then it's in a group of three. I feel complete if we do it in a group of three. Okay. Last time. Feet, block, with or without, hands behind the head, elbows open, very strong abdominals, and we're going to go for it. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and we're done. No more of that. Take your prop away. Let's actually stretch the legs out on the ground. <clears throat> and I want you to take a nice, big stretch back, breathing into the tops of the legs, into the belly, the sides of the body. Just do lots of these big breaths here. Let's grab onto our left wrist and pull yourself over to the right side. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, we'll come back to center, grab onto your right wrist, pull to the other side. We'll come back to center. Let's take the arms and we're going to actually bring them into cactus arms if you can. And when I say if you can, it's because I want you to have the backs of your hands touching the ground. If your hands are floating, that's okay, but I just want you to stretch your arms. You won't have as, as deep of a bend in your elbows because I want your hands, the backs of the hands to be resting on the ground. So we did a lot of work with our arms today, right? I'm sure you can feel it. We did it from shoulders all the way down to wrists. So we're gonna just take a few moments here to hold our arms in this position, which is actually quite a gentle pose to hold. It gives you a nice sustained stretch. So try to soften your spine. It doesn't mean that your spine is going to touch the ground by any means. You definitely likely have a, a round in your back, but just try to soften your back, soften your spine. And we're going to take some big breaths. And then gently turn your head from side to side. You're just giving your neck a stretch, but you're also moving down into the muscles in that go into the back, into your traps, into your shoulders. You're getting some stretch in your pec muscles. Okay, so we'll take another breath like this. Actually, you know what, let's keep the arms like this <clears throat> and bring your feet to the outside edges of the mat. Knees are bent and we'll drop the knees from side to side in windshield wiper knees. Of course, if you don't like having your arms in this position, then just release them. But I want you to just take some nice deep breaths as you do this movement. We're cooling the body down. We're calming the nervous system down. Let's do one more on either side, or at least until you feel even. And then we'll bring our, keep our feet flat on the ground, bring your arms alongside the body, kind of check them out, see how they're feeling. Let's hug our knees into our chest. And then either pulling the knees really wide apart and we'll take a modified happy baby or come into full happy baby. And just take a few moments here. We're gonna just massage the back, massage your low back, stretch the hips. Continuing to feel the cooling that's occurring with your skin. Hopefully. <laughs> okay. We will bring our feet back down to the ground. Bring the soles of the feet together. Let your knees open out to the side. So let's take a nice stretch here. 
in the insides of the legs. Again, just allowing your upper body, even though it's not in as deep of a stretch as the lower body is right now, just try to get it to soften. So be aware of your shoulders. Be aware if you know you, you're kind of holding tension. I know that I know for myself, I have one shoulder that is always kind of up a little bit higher off the ground because it's tighter. Reflect on your own body. Kind of what do you feel is going on with you? Do you have anything like that happening? Does one side feel good? Both sides feel good? Just, just notice here and try and soften. And we'll just take a few more breaths. You can even bring your hands to your belly and we'll just take a couple deep breaths right into the belly. So take your hands away to the outsides of the uh, thighs, bring your knees in. We're going to lift ourselves up, um, coming to a seated position. I just want to check if my volume is still here. I don't know if you guys can tell I don't have coworkers today. <laughs> All my coworkers have abandoned me. All right, so we're sitting nice and tall. I want you just to fold forward in any manner that feels good. You can bend your knees, you can round your back. Take a couple really big breaths into your back, into the back of the body. And then we'll bring ourselves back up. Let's take our right leg and step it over. We are going to twist towards the bent knee. So you're twisting towards your bent knee. You're going to get a nice stretch in your back and in your spine, taking a big breath. Relax your face. Maybe even turn your head a little more gently towards the right. Let's come back to center. Let your knee rest on your bottom leg. Keep your foot flexed, your, your bottom leg foot flexed, and just come forward here. I want you to get a big stretch in the back of the leg. And then we'll come back up, release. Maybe give them a little shake. Left leg steps over. We're going to twist toward the bent knee, so toward the left. Maybe gently bring your chin a little bit more towards the left. And then we'll come back to center. Let your knee rest on the bottom leg, knee, and keep your foot flexed and just come forward. Nice big breath. Let's bring ourselves back up. I want you to just um, be in a seated position that feels comfortable. You don't have to have your legs crossed. We're just gonna be here for a moment. I wanna just double check our arms and make sure they've had a good stretch. So comfortable position, take your right arm across the body. You can grab hold of the forearm or the wrist, or maybe you wanna do like a clamp, but I want you to just keep yourself nice and tall, keep your neck relaxed. You're just trying to make sure you get a stretch into these muscles. You're breathing deeply. Maybe even give your wrist another roll. That can't help or can't be a bad thing. <laughs> can't not help. All right, and release, give your arm a little shake. We'll do the other side. You do whatever you need to do to give yourself that stretch. A lot of people like to take a clamp type of position. I like to pull my wrist, but the thing is, you're not doing this. You're trying to keep yourself nice and tall and straight and you're trying to resist turning. So you can get that push and pull. Maybe roll your wrist. Keep your neck relaxed. Okay, 
and release the arms. And maybe just do a few circles as well. Okay, so we're gonna do a stretch. Um, I'm gonna give you an option here. This will be kind of one of our last things to do. So you can either, I'll give three options. You can come onto your hands and knees and take pigeon pose, taking your right knee up to your right wrist, stretching back through your left leg, your knee will be on the ground, and then you adjust your right shin to wherever you need. It does not need to be parallel with the mat or anything like that, but you just decide, maybe you pull your foot in closer to the body, whatever you need to do, maybe coming down on the forearms, this is pigeon. If this is too much for your hips or your knee, I want you to sit heavily on your right side, on your right leg, your right hip, line, have your front knee bent at 90 degrees and line your shin up with the top edge of the mat. Your back leg approximately also bent at 90 degrees, call this 90-90 legs, and maybe you stay like this, maybe you come forward until you need to stretch or feel the stretch. Sometimes neither of these options work, and you can come back to this beautiful pose, thread the needle, which generally is most accessible for everyone, generally. So three options, you're gonna stay here a little longer, whichever you've chosen. I want you to take nice big breaths, whatever position you're in. Let's try and take three more breaths. And you know, if you're down in, in pigeon pose, you can always consider stacking your fists. You can use your prop, resting your forehead. It's all up to you. Okay. So we're gonna to start to bring ourselves back up. So if you are in pigeon or 90-90 legs, perhaps you either wanna come up into downward dog, walk up the legs, or tabletop, push your hips from side to side. If you are doing thread the needle, uh, you actually, yeah, let's do windshield wiper knees. You can do windshield wiper knees, okay. So three options for the three different variations. Let's get ourselves ready to do the other side. You probably know what makes the most sense for your body. Sometimes one side lets you do a pose and the other side you have to modify because we have injuries, past trauma. It's just what it is, right? And we just work with our body and we try to send happy thoughts to the parts of our body that don't cooperate in the way that we want. We don't want to think bad things about our body. Say, oh, I hate my knee because it, whatever. Send nice, happy thoughts. Nourish the body. Okay, so we'll stay here a little longer. Wherever you're at, nice big breaths. Try to not clench your teeth. When we practice yoga, we are trying to cultivate a deeper relationship between our mind and our body. And I mean, the, the actual movement part of yoga, the exercise part is just a small piece of it. But as we move into the deeper stages of yoga, it is more with the mind. But the piece that we want to work on for sure, all the time, every class we take, is being aware of our body. Being aware of our body, how it feels, what we need to nourish our body. Okay, one more breath. And again, maybe coming up into downward dog, maybe staying on your hands and knees, moving the hips. Downward dog people, maybe you wanna take one more vinyasa, one more flow. If you are, um, yeah, and then eventually everybody making your way to your back. So if you were already on your back doing thread the needle, or if you were doing thread the needle, we're gonna continue doing the windshield wiper knees. So let's all of us join on our backs when you're ready, just doing a couple windshield wiper knees. Maybe you've done a lot because you've been here already. And then we're gonna bring our legs up towards the ceiling. You can grab onto your legs and hold onto them. You can do this without. Maybe you have your prop and you'd like to lift your hips up and place your prop underneath your tailbone and then you can elevate the legs. I know some of you are gonna do shoulder stands. Let's 
take whatever position we are now in and we are gonna stay here for eight more breaths. Four more breaths to go. If you are practicing shoulder stand, maybe you want to come into plow pose. And we are going to start to bring the legs back down to the ground. If you have the prop, removing it, bringing your body gently down to the ground. We're gonna stretch our legs out. Let the blood flow back into the legs. Get that nice recirculation. Fresh blood. Moving into the legs, always good to get you through your day. And we're going to do one last twist, repeating something we did at the very beginning. Let's bend our right knee in, left hand on the knee, bring your leg across the body. You can stretch your right arm away from you. Maybe this feels a little better this time. Lots of breaths here, breathing right into your belly. Hopefully your breath feels a little smoother. It doesn't feel like it has ragged edges. Maybe it started that way, feeling like it was harder to breathe deeply, and now you have a lot more ease. Body's opened up, your lungs are open. We'll come all the way back, and we'll switch the leg. Left leg bends in, hands on the knee. Bring your leg across the body and stretch. One more breath. And come all the way back. Let's release our leg out onto the ground, legs out onto the ground. Bring your arms alongside your body. Turn your palms to face up if you can. Close your eyes. We are going to stay here for just a few moments, not too long. I want you to let your whole body relax. We are softening your body. Let's take two more breaths. And one more breath. And you can start to move your fingers and your toes. You can start to turn your head from side to side. Releasing your neck. And when you are ready, bring your arms over your head. I want you to take one more big stretch. Reach to your fingers. Oops. Reach through your fingers. Reach all the way down through your toes. And we're going to take a big breath in through the nose and exhale through the mouth. We'll do that one more time. Big breath in and exhale out. And bringing your arms back so that you can help yourself roll up to a seated position. We're gonna come up into a comfortable seated position. Let's bring our hands to our heart and maybe close your eyes one more time. Just reflect on how you're feeling. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for taking time on your Saturday morning. Um, thank you for coming out and working hard. I really appreciate your support. If I'm going to post this on um, my YouTube channel, assuming that the quality <laughs> works out. So you can always check out the other videos on YouTube. And if you're interested in doing a more specialized class, I have a gentle class on Wednesdays at 10, a challenging class Thursdays at 530.
with maybe another one coming soon, another evening class coming soon. But anyway, thank you so much, everybody. Have a wonderful Saturday and weekend, and namaste.